I think my favorite holiday tradition is Christmas morning, um, unwrapping the gifts. What we do at our house is we take turns. We go from youngest to oldest and we open all the presents at once. So it can take like two or three hours. So it's really fun. Um, that way we can really um, see what everybody else got and it's not just all about you. It's more about the family. My favorite holiday tradition, I have to say two because my first is from my childhood. My favorite tradition was always, we celebrate in Iceland, we celebrate on New Year's, no, sorry, on Christmas Eve. This is where we have our at home dinners and open presents and such. But my family would always have a big family reunion on Christmas Day at my grandma's house. So my one side of the family was on Christmas Day and then on the 26th we did the other side of the family. So that was always my favorite part of Christmas growing up because I couldn't wait to see all my cousins and play all day and have fun, play games. Now my new tradition that is my absolute favorite today is something that I started two years ago. I took a whole bunch of quilts and I took my kids with me and we went to the homeless shelter in downtown Minneapolis and we gave away quilts to the homeless. And I started this and it became something that touched us so much. So we do this on Christmas Eve around uh, lunchtime and it just puts you in that Christmas spirit and I can't wait to do this again next year. I, at Thanksgiving, I give all my kids a Christmas ornament uh, to put, and I've done that for years, uh, to put on our tree. And then by the time they were all grown, they could take all their ornaments with them and, and start off with that. Uh, yeah, that's one of them. So my favorite term is fat quarter because anytime I go, um, you know, to use my company credit card, like if I go to Hobby Lobby, they're like, what's fat quarter? What is fat quarter? So I like that because then I explain to them what my business is. So it makes it fun. What is my favorite sewing term? Wow. I think it has to be stripologist because I am the head honcho stripologist. I guess chain piecing, does that count as a sewing term? Just <laughs> mindless chain piecing. I work all day and then to have sewing and quilting is my therapy. And so just maybe the repetitiveness of that is what works, so yeah. So when I am quilting, I use my headphones and I watch either Netflix, Hulu, or I listen to a podcast, Always True Crime, but I put my headphones on so that I can hear and I don't miss any words when I start sewing because I sew really fast, it gets really loud. For cross stitch, I kind of do the same thing, um, but yeah. And I hardly ever listen to music. It's usually like some kind of true crime documentary or I'm really into cults also, so I watch a lot of stuff about cults. I love to listen to audiobooks while I sew and they have to be preferably murder mysteries. They have to keep me in suspense. So yes, definitely murder mysteries. Oh, I always have noise on in the background, but friends, <laughs> I binge watch a lot of stuff now. The binge watching is, is the greatest thing ever, but Normally, that's pretty mindless stuff that you don't have to pay attention to a plot. But uh, anytime there's friends or the office on, that's just entertainment in the background. I'd like to say I been, listen to books and on tape and all that stuff, but I really don't. <laughs> My kids all say I speak in emoji, so uh, usually I just do the heart. Heart, 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 so. My most commonly used emoji is probably the heart because, you know, when I'm posting on Facebook and stuff, everybody's posting gorgeous quilts or sending love to my kids. 
It's always the heart. Okay, I don't use emojis because I don't know how, so I don't use them. If I did, I would probably use a pug, but I wouldn't even know how to get that on my phone. So I love true crime, I love documentaries, I love 80s hip hop, and I love Americana country. So like, I like um, crazy Dr. Dre fabric, and then I love Chris Stapleton. So I love just a mix of a lot of different things. And one thing that's interesting is I don't watch TV, I only watch documentaries. So I could never watch like Law and Order or anything like that, it has to be real or I don't watch it. Something that people might not know about me, maybe first that I am born and raised in Iceland, but probably that my degree is in physical education. So I taught phi ed, I used to own a health club back in Iceland where I did some training and I taught aerobics a lot. So yes, not really expected from a quilt designer. Hmm. Uh... How about I've had brain surgery? Does, is that, I mean, I think a lot of people know that, but uh, I'm like Lisa 2.0. It's, you know, I'm a natural blonde, and so I fought my whole life to not be considered a dumb blonde. But then now that I've had brain surgery, I can either say, oh, I've had brain surgery, or oops, I'm just a blonde. Uh, <laughs> So um, it's not really funny, but in our conference room is one of our designer mystery quilts. And I'm super weird about, I wanted all the stripes to go the same way. And that quilt had been hanging for a couple of years. And then one day I realized that my stripes on my top and bottom of my border don't go the same way. So it's funny now, but when I first saw it, I was super upset. But it did take me a couple of years to figure out what my mistake was. Other than buying a thousand squares of fabric, thinking it was going to make a king size quilt and they were all one inch and it made a quilt about that big, uh, that's probably definitely a learning mistake early on. So, I have made very many funny quilting mistakes, but probably the most dire one was I was publishing a new pattern. It was called the M and W quilt. Uh, yeah, M and W strip. And so it was either a W or an M. And I had made the sample and I was last minute, of course, and I had to get it to the quilter. And so I was sewing those rows together last minute and then I made it in the University of Minnesota colors because it was the M. And I got it done and I sent it to the quilter because I had to leave town the next day. And I left town and then I get a phone call from my quilter that night and she said, um, Gudrun, one of the rows is upside down. So most of it was M's, but then there was a rows of W's and I am out of town. I couldn't fix it and really didn't have time to fix it because it had to go into a photo shoot a couple of days later. So she was so nice first of all, that she noticed it, but she ripped it out and turned the roll and, and quilted it, and so it was all good. So we just want to wish everyone a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and we can't wait to see you in 2021.